Hello and welcome to the New Testament Daily with me, Jerry Dierman, where we read and talk through a chapter of the New Testament every single day. I'm glad you're here because reading God's Word daily will change your life. You can also help others find out about this resource and stay in the Word daily when you click like on this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, or share this link with others. So let's pray and then we'll jump into God's Word. Father, thank you so much for the precious, written, inspired, living Word of God. And I pray that by the Holy Spirit, each of us would hear exactly what you want to say to us. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, here we go. John chapter 9. Here's what it says. Now, as Jesus passed by, he saw a man who was blind from birth. So get that. He was blind from birth, born blind. But now he's grown up. He's a man. And his disciples asked him, saying, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Now, I want you to understand the, the premise of the question. There is a presumption by the disciples that because he was born blind, somebody sinned. Now, why would they have that presumption? Well, because the Bible they know, the God that they know, says things like Isaiah 119. If you're willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. If you obey, then you'll be blessed by God. If you disobey and rebel, then you'll be judged. And so they're looking at people, excuse me, and they're judging a person by what problems they're having and saying, well, they must have sinned because otherwise they'd be blessed by God. Well, that, that's certainly not a perfect uh, system because the Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. And Satan attacks people. And so sometimes Satan will attack somebody and we'll think, oh, see, God's judging them or they're not doing right. And we make these assessments where you're going to find out that Jesus helps to correct their doctrine a little bit. Not that it just throws out the whole idea that God blesses the obedient and God judges the disobedient, because that's true. But there are other factors that we have to consider that uh, make it not such a closed case just by whether or not something bad is happening in your life. So notice, who sinned? This man or his parents that he was that he was born blind. Notice verse three. Jesus answered, "Neither this man nor his parents sinned, but that the works of God should be revealed in him." So he said, "No, this man was not born blind because he sinned. Obviously, he was a baby and he's born blind. And this man was not born blind because his parents sinned. But he said, but that the works of God should be revealed in him.' So, in other words, uh." God had the purpose that he wanted this man to be healed, I believe, right here in Jesus' day. And so God was working some purpose in him. So does that mean that this man could not have been healed before? No, it does not. And we learned that from Jesus ministering to the woman that was bowed over and she couldn't raise herself. And Jesus said, Satan has bound this lady for 18 years. Yeah, she needs to be healed right away. And, and Jesus clearly was saying she's been 18 years too long like this. So I believe that the covenant that the Jews had would have seen this man be healed with people knowing the covenant, knowing the promises, putting their faith in him. And Jesus is the one that comes. He does know the covenant. He does know the promises. And he has faith in God's promises. And therefore, the man ends up being healed. So, but that the works of God should be revealed in him. Verse four, I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. The night is coming when no one can work. And I don't believe he's talking about the physical night. He's talking about a spiritual night. The night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. As long as I'm in the world, I'm the light of the world. Verse six, when he had said these things, watch this, he spat on the ground and made clay with the saliva, and he anointed the eyes of the blind, uh, the blind man with the clay. Now, notice the word he anointed. Sometimes we think about that word anointing like it's some really spiritual word. No, the, the word anoint means to rub on, to uh, smear on, to you could, you know, paint it on, you could dab it on, but. Uh, maybe even spray it on, but you're applying it. That might be a good word. 
they applied it. But this is the word anoint. It's not really a spiritual word. See, notice he anointed the man's eyes with mud made out of spit. <laughs> See, and so you know that this anoint, anointing is not really the anointing of the Holy Spirit here. It's an act of smearing on, rubbing on to the man's eyes, this mud that he made. So uh, we're not talking about the anointing. We're talking about mud made from spit. Verse 7, and he said to him, go wash in the pool of Siloam. Now, let me just allow this to be a little bit humorous. So here's a blind man from birth, right? And Jesus comes to him, spits on the ground right there with him, makes some mud and puts it in his eyes. Now, you can imagine, how do you feel like you're blind? You know, people have likely, uh, you know, made fun of this guy and poked fun at him uh, all the way to abuse and such. Now, here's somebody there makes you know, he can hear him spit. You know, people that are blind often are very sensitive with their hearing because they, they're compensating for the lack of vision. But not only is he blind, but now Jesus comes up. And if this man had any hint that maybe he would be healed, it's probably spoiled when Jesus spits and starts rubbing mud in his eyes. You can imagine the man saying, well, the, well, thanks a lot. You know, that's really what I needed is I needed mud put in my eyes. Right. But watch this. Jesus put the mud on the guy's eyes. He anointed his eyes with clay and said to him, go wash in the pool of Siloam. By the way, up until just a few years ago, we didn't know where the pool of Siloam was, but it's now been partially just, just, I mean, just a sh small percentage of it has been excavated to where it's been found down on the Southern part of the city of David, just to the, let's see, that'd be just to the South of the Temple Mount. They found it. So now I love to go to that place on our tours and read John chapter nine. They're at the pool of Siloam. And so he says, go wash in the pool of Siloam. I like to just jokingly say that the blind man said, "Will you think, yeah, <laughs> you just slapped mud in my eyes. Of course I need to wash, you know, so go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is translated sent. Now watch this. So he went and washed and came back seeing. Oh, can you imagine this? He was born blind. He had no concept in his mind of what it would be like to see. No concept. I mean, he could feel what trees feel like, what hands and people feel like. But to try to visualize what they look like based on what they feel like. Oh, how could you do that? And now Jesus anoints his eyes with the clay and the man makes his way down. He obviously knew how to get around. He's a grown man. He makes his way down to the pool of Siloam, which is a huge, huge pool, was, for uh, ritual washing before people would go to the temple. They had to bathe uh, to be cleansed ceremonially before they could go to the temple. So this was this was the largest pool where, be, where the masses of people could bathe. Uh, before they go to the temple. This man comes down. Can you imagine? He begins to pick up the water and put him to his eyes, washing that out. And all of a sudden, he it had never happened before. All of a sudden, maybe through his eyelids, he begins to see light for the first time. And then as he's washing this out, and you know how you blink when you're, you're putting the water in your eyes and you're blinking and such, and he's seeing the flickers of light and then flickers of images. For the very first time, you can imagine the emotion that this man would feel. And he comes back seeing. He seen for the first time. I mean, I, I, I just imagine how he'd be looking around. He just wants to see everything. And, and seeing things that he had felt before, pavement that he walked on, but he'd never known what it really looked like, and people, and clothing and the blue sky and the clouds and et cetera, et cetera. Maybe in the, uh, in the distance up the temple, model, the temple and what it actually looked like. I mean, this is a big deal. Sometimes we read over these things like, oh yeah, Jesus just does all these miracles. Every one of them are an individual who has feelings, who is valuable to the Lord. And the Lord wants us to see with the eyes of the Lord how people need the Lord, and we have the power of God 
And God wants the connection to be made between his power in us and the people. And often that connection is made because of love, that we love enough to sacrifice, to focus on somebody and to bring the ministry of the Lord to them. So it says, he went so simple. He went and washed and came back seeing. Therefore, the neighbors and those who previously had seen that he was blind said, is this not he who sat and begged? They're asking people, isn't this the blind guy that we always pass by here? Some said, this is he. Others said, he's like him, but I, can that be the guy? He's like him. And he said, now the blind man said, I am. I am he. Therefore, they said to him, how were your eyes opened? How is it you can see? He answered and said, a man called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and said to me, go to the pool of Siloam and washed. So I went and washed and I received sight. I mean, how can it be that simple? We all know it's the power of God. Then they said to him, where is he? Where is this man? See, you can tell right there that not everybody knew who Jesus was. Sometimes we get the idea that everybody knew him. Well, everybody didn't know him. They said, where is he? He said, I do not know. They brought him who formerly was blind to the Pharisees. Now it was a Sabbath when Jesus made the clay and opened his eyes. And as we know, the, the religious leaders don't like when you do something on the Sabbath, even if, some, if it's something good. Verse 15, then the Pharisees also asked him again, how he received his sight. He said to them, he put clay on my eyes and I washed it. I see you can see his answer is getting shorter and shorter because he's sort of tired of telling the story. And that's the, what we normally do when we're tired of telling it. We just give sort of the summarized version. Well, it was already short, but he said, he put clay on my eyes and I washed and I see. Therefore, some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God, talking about Jesus, because he does not keep the Sabbath. Can you believe that? He just opened the eyes of a man who had been born blind, and they're saying, you didn't keep the Sabbath, so he must not be from God. Others said, how can a man who is a sinner do such signs? Well, that's a good question. And there was a division among them. They said to the blind man again, what do you say about him? Because he opened your eyes. What's your opinion about Jesus? He said, he is a prophet. But the Jews did not believe concerning him that he had been born blind and received his sight until they called the parents of him who had received his sight. And they asked them. So now they brought the parents in because they're saying, he he wasn't blind. This is all, they're fabricating this miracle. He wasn't blind. So they bring the parents in and they said to them, is this your son who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered them and said, we know that this is our son and that he was born blind, but by what means he now sees, we do not know, or who opened his eyes, we do not know. He is of age, ask him. He will speak for himself. Now watch this. His parents said this, these things because they feared the Jews, for the Jews had agreed already that if anyone confessed that he, Jesus, was the Christ, he would be put out of the synagogue. They did know who healed him. They had already heard by that time, but they didn't want to say they're putting it back on their son because they didn't want to be thrown out of the synagogue. Therefore, his parents said, he is of age, ask him. Verse 24. So they called the man, they again called the man who was blind. Now you can imagine, now they're going to ask him again, even though he's tired of telling the story. Watch this. So they again called the man who was blind and said to him, give God the glory. We know that this man is a sinner. Don't give the credit to Jesus. We know he's a sinner. Verse 25, he answered, the formerly blind man answered and said, whether he is a sinner or not, I do not know. One thing I know that though I was blind, now I see. Oh, that's a powerful statement. It's like, look, look, all I know is I got the results. I've been blind my whole life since I was a child, but today I can see. I can't speak to whether he's a sinner. All I know is I've got my sight back. Verse 26, then they said to him again, what did he do to you? How did you, how did he open your eyes? So they're asking him for more detail now. Watch this. He answered them, I told you already and you did not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? Oh, that, 
irritated him, didn't it? And then they reviled him and said, you are his disciples, but we are Moses' disciples. We know that God spoke to Moses. As for this fellow, we do not know where he is from. The man answered and said, I just love this part. The man answered and said, now he's talking to the religious rulers, the teachers, the experts in the scriptures, and supposedly in relationship with God. The man answered and said to them, why, this is a marvelous thing that you do not know where he is from. Yet he has opened my eyes. Now we know that God does not hear sinners. See, he's telling them their own doctrine. They've always said, God's not going to listen to sinners. He said, now we know that God does not hear sinners, but if anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will, he hears him. Since the world began, it has been unheard of that anyone opened the eyes of one who was born blind. Think about that. Since the world began, it has been unheard of. Now, why do you think he could make that statement? Because he was the one that was blind. And don't you think he would ask people, hey, have you ever heard of anybody with my condition being healed? Have you ever heard of anybody gaining their sight back? Oh, he had inquired. And what he had heard was, it has never been heard of that a person that was born blind ever received their sight back. And now they're trying to, in a sense, take away the celebration here or try to discount the man who healed him. He said... He said, since the world began, it has been unheard of that anyone opened the eyes of one who was born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered and said to him, you were completely born in sins. And are you teaching us? Now we know every human being after Adam was born in sin. But they're trying to say, because you were born blind, it's because of sin in your life and in your family's life. But Jesus had already clarified that's not the reason that this happens. Sometimes we want to impose sin on people and we shouldn't. And Jesus said, that's not it. But these people are mistaken. They said, you were completely born in sins. And are you teaching us? And they cast him out. We don't want you to tell us anymore about this Jesus. Jesus heard that they had cast him out. And when he had found him, Jesus went to find him. And when he had found him, he said to him, do you believe in the Son of God? He answered and said, who is he, Lord, that I may believe in him? And Jesus said to him, watch the way Jesus talks in the third person. You have both seen him, and it is he who is talking with you. So Jesus is not wanting to brag on himself, but he's clearly communicating to the man that he himself is the Son of God. Then this formerly blind man, he said, Lord, I believed, and he worshipped him. Probably that means he got down on his knees and bowed before Jesus to honor him as the Lord. Verse 39, and Jesus said, for judgment, I have come into this world that those who do not see may see and that those who see may be blind. In other words, those who think they see. Now watch this. Then some of the Pharisees who were with him heard these words and said to him, are we blind also? Jesus said to them, if you were blind, you would have no sin. But now you say we see. Therefore, your sin remains. He's really addressing the pride of the heart where we get cocky. We think we know everything and therefore we don't listen. We don't seek truth here. A noted outstanding, maybe a first in history miracle happened. And here are the people that say they love God and love the word and they will not receive that this miracle happened and rejoice and give thanks to God. They won't do it. And so Jesus said, because you persist to say that you see it the right way, then your sin remains. Oh, folks, may our hearts be open to the truth. May we be like the Lord here who believes that God will do miracles, even if they've never been done before. And then when people come and share a miracle with us, may we not be so hard-hearted and so skeptical that we don't believe and we disbelieve everything. We're too skeptical. We won't give glory to God. May we not be like that. May we rejoice, not, not being naive or gullible. Uh, we, it's okay to ask questions, you know, just to verify. However, there's a part of us that is skeptical to the point of disrespect. And we have to be careful of that and know that God is a good God. 
He wants to love people. He wants to heal people. He wants to bless people. And he wants those of us who are who are around or hear of the miracles to rejoice and to celebrate and to say God truly is a good God. <laughs> Praise God. All right. Tomorrow we got another great chapter, John chapter 10.